Hi, I'm Reggie York at the University of North Carolina Wilmington. I'm doing a preview here of Chapter 3 of uh, a book on statistical analysis for human service evaluation. First question I want to pose to you is, how is a descriptive study different from the explanatory one? For example, how many variables is in each descriptive analysis that you do? When you do an, a descriptive analysis, are you using one variable, two, three, or what? Well, descriptive analysis always contains only one variable. You want to do, you want to describe a variable one at a time. How many variables on, are in the explanatory study? Is that also one, or is it more than one? Well, the explanatory study has more than one hypothesis. Typically, it's two, but it could be more. <clears throat> Can the descriptive study have variables measured at either the nominal level, the ordinal level, or the interval level, or just one of these levels? If you're doing a descriptive study, can you have variables measured at any of those levels? The answer is yes. It doesn't matter what level of measure you you are you have for your variable. Uh, you can do a descriptive statistic for it. The, the particular statistic you do will be different depending on the level of measure. But you can do descriptive analysis of variables measured at any of those levels. Which of the following is the most important thing to know before you select a statistic? I'm going to throw out several options for you. If you'll hit the pause button, look them over before and decide what the answer is before you come to me. <coughs> well, the answer is A, the structure of your data. That's far more important than the research question or the study hypothesis or the procedures for research ethics. As a matter of fact, none of those are essential for you to know. But it is essential that you know the structure of your data. Are you comparing the match scores of a single group of people? Or are you comparing a set of post-test scores to a score that represents a, a threshold of, or a pretest mean or something of that nature? That is what you need to know in order to find a statistic. If you don't know the answer to that question, you're not ready to look for a statistic. Are any of these examples of descriptive statistics A, B, or C? If you'll look at those, hit the pause button, look at them, and come back. Both example B and C are examples of descriptive statistics. A examines data that are considered inferential statistics. Can you remember what is the study hypothesis? How is it related to the research question? How is it related to the intervention objective? Well, the, the hypothesis will be very much tied into the research question you have. If you want to know whether the treatment program improved the client's level of anxiety, you will, of course, have an hypothesis that says post-test scores will be lower or higher than pre-test scores in regard to anxiety. The intervention objective then, of course, would be to improve anxiety. Do you know, is a one-group pre-test, post-test design an, an example of a research design? Is this one example? One group, is there a one-group pre-test, post-test research design? The answer is yes. There are many, many research designs. This is one of them. Is this a research design? Post-test scores will be higher than pre-test scores. No. Post-test scores will be higher than pre-test scores would be an example of a study hypothesis. What is meant by matched scores? Do you recall what this means? Well, it's about where, when you have 
uh, something like a pretest score and a posttest score from a group of individuals, and you know how to match each one. In other words, you, you know what the pretest score and posttest score is from John Smith and from Mary Jones and so forth. You can match each person's pretest score with that person's posttest score. There are other examples of match scores. That's the, that's the most likely one you'll face in evaluative research. Okay, that is the completes my preview. I hope this helps you.